Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, those that follow my channel know that I enjoy buying pens on eBay. I've been doing it for probably 20 some years. Uh, I've had very good experiences and um, not any real disappointments. So I saw this pen at auction and I just fell in love with it and based on the description it has a unique nib from a very well-known pen manufacturer and it's, it should look really nice. So we're going to open it up. You know, I got an alert on email that it was delivered and I went to the mailbox and there it was. Yeah, these are those classic uh, labels that are generated from the sale. And it was shipped domestically, so it arrived relatively quickly. I'm surprised about how light the box feels, but then, you know, it's deceptive when you get something of this large nature with a small item inside of it. So they have some bubble wrap, some paper wrap, and they have the pen wrapped up, and we're going to extract the pen. And uh, it's what I expected. It's a Parker Dual Fold. It's a smaller version, but it's one that acrylic that I don't have, a color that I don't have, and I just wanted to give it a shot because of the nib. So we're going to be going into detail with this. I'm going to do my own exploration, but I just wanted to give you a view of what it's like to get an order delivered on eBay and to find it to be what you expected. Very good condition. I wanted to show how the Parker pens uh, come apart. The uh, nib and feed is a friction fit. Pulls out relatively easily, but it, it uh, requires some effort. I wanted to thoroughly clean the international. You can see there's a little bit of ink in there, even though I did flush it well with my usual solutions and then with water, I still wanted to take it apart and I also want to clean the nib. But I want to take this opportunity to take a look at these two nibs up close. Because I think that's the big difference between these two pens other than the size difference. So in one of the write-ups I read, this um, Centennial nib on the left is was considered the largest gold nib of its time. Parker did make their own nibs in-house. And it is interesting, there's a lot of similarities, but also there's some design differences, at least in the way that the nib is, uh, the two-tone nib is engraved with some interesting feature sets. The fact that they put the dual fold on the International I find interesting. So we're going to continue to clean this up. I'm going to grease, even though there's a lot of silicone grease already on there. I showed that this unscrews, and again, it takes a little bit of effort because all these parts fit together very, very well. They are tight, so uh, they do come apart, but, you know, use your discretion if that's something you want to do. I think this is a very interesting nib to look at. Got some sunlight coming in, so hopefully that detail is coming out nicely. If you flip it over, on this side I think is unplated raw 18 karat gold. And I think they plated it as they plated all the other uh, metal bits on the pen in uh, 22 karat gold. So they all have a common kind of gold color that's indicative of the plate. And of course the silver ones are pro the silver bits are probably rhodium plated. And that's a very interesting, intriguing grind on that. This is called a fine stub, but I certainly would call it more of a medium stub. And it does seem to have a slight angle to it, but it's not called an oblique. But we'll see how it writes, because that's really the important part. The other reason why I wanted to uh, get this international pen was to compare it to the Centennial version. So dual fold made at least these two sized pens for 20 some years. This pen was actually, uh, the blue one here was, uh, is the Centennial and it was made in 1989, third quarter. 
And the green one was made in 1991, uh, third quarter. So the green one is a newer pen. Uh, the resin, from what I've read, is a PMMA resin, which is not something that I've ever heard about, polymethyl methacrylate being used to produce this type of look. I mean, they are consistent in the swirling and everything else. They both have these dual bands, but uh, the centennial are rounded and these are flat. And Parker did that a lot in their different models to distinguish them. The clip appears to be the same, at least from a length viewpoint on these two pens. And the uh, international one has, it looks, I think, some of these initials, TM in the top. Very tastefully done. I don't mind that. So let's take a look at how the business end looks different in these two pens. So after writing with these pens for a couple days, my conclusion is that the centennial size, the larger one, I would call more of a desk pen. It's a little bit big, a little bit heavier, and not a lot, but you feel it in the hand. And you definitely feel it in long writing sessions. And I don't think either of these pens I would post. I mean, they don't post very deeply. They post very securely, but the cap is, is not light. It's, it's about a third of the way of the pen. So you do get some back weighting, which I think detracts from uh, the comfort of uh, long-term writing. If we zoom in on the business end, We'll see the two gold bands on the Centennial, which I think marks it as a higher end pen. And the prices ranged quite a bit from their initial offering. And nowadays they're pretty much on the high end, but uh, you do find them uh, discounted quite a bit uh, from some uh, suppliers. Endless pens is one. And the nib is, is definitely bigger. I mean, to me, the Centennial is more of a show pen. You know, would looks impressive on your desk if that's uh, some an environment that that might work for you. But to me, the International is more of an everyday writer. I can see uh, using it every day um, from a comfort viewpoint. And obviously, the fine italic nib i did my research and it is an italic it's not a stub and you know the difference between an italic and stub is is pretty much a from what i can gather uh, subjective they both have a flat end to them where a stub nib is more rounded and italic nib is sharper and uh we'll take a look at that in the in the writing samples this section again everything is proportionately sized on both of these pens, which I think is a, is a tribute to Parker and their engineering and their understanding of, of writing and, and what works as a good writing instrument from both the aesthetics viewpoint, considering these pens are close to 30 years old, they look like they're brand new. And I can conceive of 50 years from now, they're still going to look like they're brand new. And the engineering that went into these, the flow of the ink, they're supposedly able to survive airplane travel. It's just excellent. And and I think that, you know, Lassie Skrull's gotten into his dual fold and, and uh, so is Sigboot. So uh, hopefully other people become aware of these great pens. And I, I think in the scheme of things, you can get one at a good value. Here's one that recently sold on eBay for a very, very good price. I'd be remiss if I didn't show these in comparison to the Moonman M600. So different sizes, you know, the I put the Moonman in between the International cent Centennial because the Centennial is thicker and the Moonman kind of fits in between, but lengthwise it's it's longer than, than both pens. But I think they did a good job of, of doing an homage to a classic design. Obviously, the Moon Man has a steel nib, but it writes extremely well. Um, nothing writes like the fine italic in the International. Another comparison that I think is good to do is the Centennial versus the M800. 
And these are actually made in a similar time frame, 1989, uh, late 1980s. And here's an M400. I think an M600 would be more appropriate to put in this size, but I don't have an M600. So I'm just using this to illustrate. I mean, this is a substantial differential between the M400 and M800. And I would say it's about double. I mean, even though it's not double in length, but I think as far as the look goes. And also, um, two gold bands here, but nothing here in the piston filler. And this is an older M800, so the design may have changed a little bit later. But I think the... Uh, International is a good sized pen relative in, in the series of the dual folds. That the dual fold model, when it was brought back, I think they did an excellent job in how they sized it and the materials that they used in putting it together. You may ask, how do I know what date it is? Well, you can see here it's, it's engraved in the back of the cap and there's an IN there. It's made in UK and it has Parker on it. I used the blue one here because the green one is much more difficult to read. Here we are with the green one and I'm trying to get that to come out and you can see it's just barely visible. It's a much uh, finer engraving or there's been some wear but it doesn't seem to be wear anywhere else on the pen. One thing that I didn't notice the difference between these two clips is the Centennial one the feathers are engraved in and on the international one, they're raised. So it's interesting. I haven't read a lot about how Parker has changed that arrow design on the clip, but it's a subtle change. Interesting. You may ask, uh, do you have another uh, fine italic? And I would say yes. Is this a uh, great Franklin Christoph pen uh, with a 14 karat gold nib? And this has been ground by Mike Masiamo. I think it's easy to see that that tipping on the Franklin Christoph nib is definitely fine. They're definitely ground in a similar way. It's more apparent when you take a look at the backside. Any of that round material that may have been on the nib originally has been ground flat. But these two nibs write very differently. And we'll take a look at that when we go to the writing sample. Here are two 1.1 millimeter stubs. One's a Lamy and one's a generic Chinese stub. And I have a number of these and I've been very happy with them. So you see these were never really ground. They're just really flat. And these also have a more rounded edge. And as you can see, they're both called 1.1s, but the Lamy one certainly looks narrower. Um, the Lamy one writes more like an italic and the 1.1 Chinese stub writes more like a generic stub. You know, so this uh, Lamy one has a crisper line, a sharper line, and uh, the other one is a rounded, uh, is more rounded, so it has, a, you know, less of a crispness to it, and also it's much smoother on the paper. Here's some uh, writing samples from the different nibs that I described. When I did these writing samples, I tried to keep the nib at the same angle, you know, and, and not rotate it one way or the other, and just move it differently based on the different strokes. So the dual fold fine italic is certainly about twice as wide as the fine italic on the Franklin Christoph, and that's what you'd expect from looking at the nibs when we looked at them up close. Uh, they both do pretty good on the downstrokes. Uh, the Franklin Christoph is a much softer nib and it opens up a little bit more so you're getting some uh, tine opening in addition to the line variation based on the grind. And I did some horizontal strokes and vertical strokes and these I did holding the nib this way I, I did writing this way and this way. So one of the things that becomes very apparent is on this fine italic, which is a very crisp fine italic, and uh, Mike Masiamo is known for that, when you're writing at an angle like this, you're going to catch the edges of the nib, and it's not pleasant feeling. So here's that medium nib in the dual fold centennial, and just to show you the fine italic versus medium, and I think the medium's on the thick side and heavy side of a medium. 
So that's why I would definitely call this a, a, a medium metallic up here. Here's that Lamy 1.1, which is considered a stub in the wing song. And to me, it writes with a much crisper line than the 1.1 millimeter in the Moonman M2. This is a much more forgiving nib, a much easier nib to use. And you don't quite get the Christmas and, and line variations, but it is certainly a nice wet, wide line. And just for comparison's sake, here's a 308, which has a custom nib ground in it. And its ground is a left oblique. So again, you have similar line variations that you get on the italic. Um, the verticals are eh, pretty wide, but not quite as wide. You know, you still get a nice variation. And here you can see that when you go this direction, it writes fine, but coming back this way with the nib oriented the same way, you're going to get a different size line. So because of the angle of the nib, it affects and shows up more when the angle of your writing. You may ask what ink did I use, and I used this Pen BBS uh, 286. I have to translate to see if I can get a name for the ink. You can see it was made in April of 2018, so it's about a year old. Here's those great octagonal bottles that it comes in. They all have interesting labels on them, not necessarily something that is semi-indicative of the ink color. Here's a color card, and I call it a dark teal. I don't see any sheen here in the blob of ink I put down there. But I just like the color. It has some decent shading to it. The chromatography is not, you know, extremely exciting, but you got some intense blue. It looks like it has some permanence there at the bottom. So um, I just think it's a nice ink, good flow, and I'm enjoying it. It's also in both of the Parker dual folds that we're looking at today. I think you can hear how smooth this nib is. I mean, another top five nib in, in my experience. I've used this nib for taking notes and it worked great. Um, it's very forgiving. I've left the cap off for a few minutes and then started to write and it wrote first time. So kudos to Parker. I think they did an excellent job in the fact that you know, nowadays, I, I would say it's only Aurora that really has a full range of nibs now that you can choose from. Uh, most of the other uh, pen makers really just fine mediums and maybe a broad now and then and maybe a stub. But I really, I really like this nib. It just feels good in my hand. It feels great on the paper. Now, if we go to the fine italic uh, and the Franklin Kristoff, as you can see, those horizontal lines are very thin and if you go down with no pressure you get a little bit of line variation if you put a little bit more pressure on you know the nib is a little soft and it will open up but just normal pressure the line variation is not that great but it was much uh, more in the grind on the uh, Parker nib I think you can hear that this is certainly a uh, sharper nib and you know you can do this way vertical and if you go this way you can feel it on the paper much more than you can feel the other one it has more feedback which is a symptom of a crisp italic so now we'll look at the medium one and it's the same ink the pen bbs 286 in here and as you can see this lays down a lot of ink and this nib is also soft as soft as the a number six uh, 14 karat yovo nib uh, this is a very forgiving nib, and it also sings a little bit. Can't get it to sing on this paper because this uh, it'll sing on uh, Rhodia or Clairefontaine and probably Tomo River. 
But this is a certainly a, a wetter and, and deeper line. As you can see, the color of the ink is more, you know, more intense here. You still get some type of shading, but not quite as much. So I showed this when I did uh, my uh, static writing samples, but this is that 1.1 Lamy stub, and it's not quite as fine on the horizontals, and it's about the same on the verticals. It's just smooth. It's much smoother than the fine italic that uh, Mike ground for me, but it, it's a little bit similar to the fine italic in, in the Parker pen. So, you know, there's a lot of different nibs out there, and, and I think if you're going to do something with a nib, hopefully you can get to a store or a show or something where you can actually sit down and play with different nibs um, if you want to get a nib ground, that's a great way to work with a nib meister or nib grinder and see if what nibs will work for you. We've reached uh, the end of this video now. Hopefully it wasn't too long and hopefully I was able to give you a little bit of a, an idea of this great uh, Parker dual fold that they came out with again in the late 80s. And the amount of different nibs that are out there that, that you can experience. So thank you for watching. May have many great writing experiences. Explore this phenomenal world of nibs. So we've reached the end of this video. And goes to show you when I'm trying to write over the tripod and, you know, no matter what kind of nib you have, it's going to be a challenge. So enjoy your pens. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your life. Bye for now. It's a nice nibbing combo.